Restaurants are getting hit really hard with these wild market swings. You could just see some of them right there on the board. The fast food giant Andy Puzner on what's going on here. Andy, you know, the restaurants look like they were doing pretty well. I saw a lot of them report earnings. Uh, and for the most part, if they didn't beat, they still went up. Buffalo Wild Wings, Panera, and all of these names. It should be big beneficiaries of gas. But there's something beneath the surface that we still haven't seen any of these industries like yours do as well as we were as they were promised when gas plummeted and the strong dollar went up. What's going on? Well, actually, I think the fact that gas, you've, you've hit the nail on the head, the fact that gas is going down should be very good for our sector. I think a lot, some companies are just trading at multiples that were very, very high. When the market comes down, you're going to see them come down. We've got restaurants with a lot of exposure in China. Now the Chinese economy is slowing, so that could impact their stocks. Uh, stocks with heavy exposure in Europe may be affected because, the, because of government policies. Uh, the economy in Europe is really slow, but domestic companies, companies that have a solid base in the United States, should see a real benefit from gas prices going down. And uh, I'd be very surprised if that didn't happen. What, what about this new, uh, I, and I want to ask if it is a permanent paradigm shift. Just recently, for the first time in history, Americans eat out more food outside of the home than they do in the home. And I think that's a, a, a really probably the result of everyone having to work, everyone's on the go. Uh, but it should, do you think that continues? I think that does continue. I think that's been a trend for a number of years. Uh, we've, we, restaurants continue to make it easier to eat out of home. We continue to lift the quality of the food. You know, we have all natural beef and black Angus beef and bake our buns in the restaurants, do things that fast food companies really wouldn't have done even five or 10 years ago. So we've re, everybody keeps lifting the bar and it becomes much more appealing, not only from a quality perspective, but also from a price perspective. And that's very appealing to people in an economy where everybody's trying to work or take their kids to soccer games or you know our life becomes more complicated there's no doubt about that another thing that's become more complicated unfortunately not just for your business but business in general these regulations of course Obamacare is, is always often cited particularly by your industry uh, and then uh, coupled with the $15 minimum wage as, as a dual jobs killer you know I, I don't you're, I, your guys are pub, uh, pr private but I look through these earnings reports and I look at what restaurants spend on on rent what they spend on personnel and then what they spend on supplies and the margins are very low to begin with. Yeah, the mar there was a recent study out saying that margins in fast food restaurants for franchisees are about four to six cents on the dollar. So every time you increase the cost, you make it more difficult for franchisees. So that in, in Seattle, for example, uh, since the beginning of the year, they had a state minimum wage increase and then the minimum wage went to 11. It hasn't even gone to 15 yet, but they've lost 1,300 uh, restaurant industry jobs in the uh, in the DMA where Seattle is over that period of time. A thousand of those right after the minimum wage went to $11. So these things have an impact and businesses that are growing, they look to costs like health care costs to determine whether or not to make an investment. And you've also got the NLRB attacking the franchise business model, which has lifted more people from the working class to the middle class than I think any business model we've ever had in this country. So government needs to back off. We've got too much government. It's too intrusive. It's reducing personal liberty and it's reducing economic freedom. And that only slows economic growth. Although, to your point, uh, th at least with this administration, they're not going to back off. The NLRB probably will, will even go a little bit faster, a little bit harder, and a little bit deeper into achieving their goals. So having said that, you talked about these great innovations. You talked about the quality of food. You talked about the economic circumstances being improved for everyone involved. Could that be put on hold or actually derailed if they keep pushing this? Well, American entrepreneurs have been overcoming government interference since World War II. It's just gotten to the point where it's very, very difficult to overcome what's going on. And we do have candidates out there, uh, Bush, Rubio, Walker, Carly Fiorina. We've got a lot of business-friendly candidates out there. And I'm hoping people that are looking to their children's futures, to their own futures, and to the best interests of the United States and our economy will look very hard at what candidates are promoting business growth, personal growth, individual liberty, and uh, the dignity and self-respect of work, and what candidates are supporting government dependence, and this continued growth in government, which is killing us as a country. You know, people think I'm crazy, but I love to see someone promote a lower minimum wage. To your point, to get someone 
in the job market to get someone, uh, you know, getting up, hitting the alarm clock, taking a shower, punching a clock, and then making money, earning something themselves and getting involved, beginning now the first rung of the income ladder, the first rung of the ladder of success in this country. I would love to see it, I, I, but I know that would never happen. But at least perhaps we could do something about this mind, this craziness with $15 minimum wage. Well, then it, it's even a bigger problem that we've got su we've got such a huge gap right now between how you go from ha from from having you know food stamps, Section 8 housing, and Medicaid, how you jump to independence from the welfare rolls. We used to have workfare. We had uh, Bill Clinton actually made some very very positive moves with respect to the welfare programs in this country, and the Obama administration took us right back. So now we have people that really can't get from dependence to independence because right. the gap is too large. And so we ne we need something like the earned income tax credit, which is a an income supplement as opposed to just these myriad bureaucrats democratic programs where people can always earn more as they move up that ladder and never take that big fall off the cliff. So there's a lot of problems out there. They, there are solutions. There are candidates who are proposing solutions. Right. I hope American people take a really good look at this. So do I. You know, there's something wrong when you uh, do go into the job market and you actually take a pay cut because of all the other stuff, yes. the freebies you were getting from the government. Andy, you're great. We love you, man. Big Have a great problem. weekend. And uh, keep, keep those great commercials coming, too. <laughs>